Come on. Come on. Go on. Off the road. Go on. Ah, boy. Don't stop. Go. Sunday morning, 6.20 a.m., leaving Walton, and just 35 out of Goderich. Cool. Just 34 out of Goderich. Sun's not even up yet. Oh, I was on an expected climb. Oh. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. I don't know if I should attempt it or not, or just turn around and go back to the side road. But uh, if I do attempt it, and I can only get about halfway up, then uh, I can't turn around. So I think I'm going to go head back that way and go around the block. So down here was where I was supposed to come up. And I believe the trail picks up here. I'm going to have to go check that out before I go in there. What they're trying to do here is uh, come up with enough funding to make a tunnel to go right under this road. So. I'm going to go see what I'm in for here. Oh my. Okay. That looks doable. I'm going to be full on brakes walking down that one. I'm take a little break first. I'm in Blythe. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you get to come along. I sure hope this is the worst it gets because I can only do so much with this bike. And sand. That's not good. Okay, that worked out all right. Carry on.
tape. Now what? Am I even going the right way? Ah, oh, shit. There's no way of me leaning my bike up against anything to go and find out. Huge river here. I don't even know how I'm supposed to get across. I'm assuming I'm supposed to go this way. This how last bit of the trail is getting really, really, really rough. No, 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 no. What's going on here? I lost the trail. I got no place. Now I'm in sand and now I can't get out. Okay, uh, as you can see, I'm out of breath. These last, uh, last five kilometers have been really rough. I missed the detour sign. I found myself deep in the bush. I honestly, I couldn't tell you how I got my bike out of there. But I did. I found my mistake, but now I'm on the the detour route to cross a river. I don't know how long this is, how far this is, but I just want back on a nice, clean trail again. This is more gravel riding, it's a little rougher. Okay. I just made it out of the devil's detour. Well, I'm still on the detour, but I'm on pavement. And uh, this will take me back to the G2G, so. Uh, yeah, 10 o'clock in the morning. Gotta watch out for uh, that stuff. All right, I'm gonna walk this hill. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, you know what? That whole business was my fault. I didn't see the detour sign. And uh, I was basically just looking down at the ground because the ground got loose gravel and I was concerned about uh, traction and wiping out. So I was looking down at the ground and I totally missed that sign. I did a complete circle in some unknown backwoods that I would never would have believed I would have been able to get my bike in and out of there. You know, looking back, it could have been a whole lot worse. The trail split up in eight different directions. I didn't know what was what.
things could have got really, really bad. Probably to the point where I would have to dismantle all my bags and my trailer and carry, carry everything out. There's no way I would have been able to turn around. It was just a thin walking trail it got down to. and Man, things you learn, eh? Anyway, I'm good. Okay, I just came off that road now. And uh, I see a bridge ahead. Ah yes, another hill. Alright, that's it for now. Long walk ahead. Dear Lordy, get a run at this. Enough. This is what I'm talking about. Hill after hill after hill after hill on this detour. I think I've wasted two hours on this detour. All because a bridge is out. It is what it is. Alright, I'm finally back on the rail trail. Finally. It's like 11.30 now. Uh, left at 20 after 6 in the morning. And I've only gone 44 kilometers. But I'm just 10 kilometers out of Goderich. Making better time. Okay, I'm just uh, five kilometers out of Goderich. Goderich is out that way. What I need to do when I'm done in Goderich is I need to come back up this highway. Now, I really, really don't want to climb this hill, but, but if I can find another way out there, I'll figure. Right, there is um, there'll be a set of stairs or, or something obvious as a pathway. Okay. Catch up to a little cul-de-sac. You go out to there and you come out to that. Oh, road. perfect! Well, you just saved me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some effort. I thought I saw something like that when I googled it, um, so but I wasn't sure. So there's Tiger Dunlop. Tiger Dunlop's tomb is up here on the left, 
and then there's another access again that leads you up to that cul-de-sac. Okay. Here. Yeah, that's the way I go. I will look for it. Okay. Absolutely. That's going to save me a lot. Thanks. It's nice to have some help along the way. I've talked to him a few times already, but, but yeah. 21 is my way all the way up to Port Elgin. So, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much here in Goderich now. Uh, pretty much at the end of the line. Right on the shores of Lake Huron. One more cool thing to check out. Don't hit that. <laughs> I've always wanted to see this. Better put the camera down now. Okay, I was uh, I was hoping to ride into Goderich or right into the town where I could replenish some water, dry out my tent, maybe have something to eat because I have not eaten in two days. That's another story. But I definitely don't want to go and have to come back up this hill again. So I'm going to take my chances and press on. Yeah, uh, I saw somebody else uh, post their ride on YouTube uh, where they did the ride from Goderich to Guelph and when I saw this bridge I had to see it so another thing off my bucket list the bridge and the entire G2G trail woohoo Guelph to Goderich now I head north One hundred and twenty nine kilometers to Guelph. I'm not going back. Cool. Okay, I just come back from the uh, the bridge and I am right where the gentleman told me to go up into this survey and it'll be a lot easier to get onto the highway. Um I was gonna set up here uh, just to dry out my tent and uh, get something to eat. Ooh, spider on my finger. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, buddy. Come on, that's enough. All right, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I thought about uh, drying out my tent because it's really wet from the morning dew. And even my pillow, but, and maybe have something to eat. But I think I'm probably just about 15, 20 kilometers from a provincial park point farms provincial park so it only being one o'clock in the afternoon if I can uh, get there I've got the rest of the day to get resituated I can get free water just replenish everything so well that's the plan you make plans as you go Got a little bit of a shoulder. Just five kilometers. I have a site for the night. Woohoo! So I decided to uh, end a day early, about 60 kilometers in, 
because I know I'm not going to have a lot of days off and I really need to do some work on my equipment, my tent, and as well as my feet. So anyway, so I, it's like, I don't know, 1.30? I'm going to have a great evening and I get to have my first meal in two days. Woohoo! Comfort station. There will be a shower. Isn't this great? That's <laughs> what it's all about. But you know what's even better? Yeah! In just two and a half days. Awesome. Also, the woman at the gate said she's going to give me her favorite camping spot. So, let's go see where it is. I think maybe this is it. Yes, it is. The reason being, I have no neighbors. I got two picnic tables. Look at this. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I scored today. So, even though I'm here, I've got a lot of work to do. Replenish my water, dry out my tent before I even put it up. I gotta go through all my equipment because all my equipment is so scattered now, it's ridiculous. But also, I gotta look after my feet. So, yeah, early in the day, it's like 1.30 in the afternoon. No pressure. And if you're good, I'll take you down to the water to see Lake Huron. Right on the beach. Out there somewhere. <laughs> Long way down. Sorry. Sorry. Um, the bit of the strap is on. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, it's just sinking in now. I'm walking in on the shores of Lake Huron. I got into Goddard's today. It was only a 60 kilometer ride. And uh, realized I was just five kilometers from Point Farm Provincial Park. Now I don't plan on any days off, but I thought I'd come here and do some rehab, dry out my tent, and uh, get my equipment in order. So 
I came, I got here at about 1.30. Got all the work I needed to get done. And it looks like maybe tomorrow, we're looking at a 100 kilometer ride to McGregor Point Provincial Park. Sometimes I wonder if I'm still capable of such distance, but, uh, yeah. I'll we'll talk about last night a little bit. <laughs> I, uh, I camped out somewhere I probably shouldn't have. But I deemed it kind of an emergency. It was getting late at night. I was running out of steam. And there was nothing else to do, so I plopped down, set my tent up. As soon as it got dark, I went to sleep. I was up at 4.30 in the morning, and I packed up and gone by 6.20, so I don't think it hurt anybody. But uh, so far, this trip's been a blast. It's just really starting to sink in now where I am. Actually, you know what? I have never touched Lake Huron before, and I'm in the water, so that's pretty cool. It's nice and warm too. So, obviously I don't have a, a real schedule, and, uh, oh, got stones. So I'm not sure what time I'm leaving in the morning. I'd like to leave early. If it's going to be a 100 kilometer day, it's going to be a 12 hour day. And uh, I want to take it easy. I want to take it easy doing it. So we'll see what happens. But you know what? I'm loving this. This is great. I thought I'd just come down and get my feet wet. No, I'm not swimming. Yeah, my tent was really drenched. The dew at night is, is ridiculous. It's almost like it, it actually rained. So when I did pitch my tent last night, I didn't put the fly on because really where I camped I couldn't get pegs into the ground. So the dew got into my tent, got into my mattress, pillow, sleeping bag, and uh, it's all dry now. I kind of figured I might get an opportunity if I had gotten the Godrich, I could have went to a park somewhere with some picnic tables and just dry everything out and then just carry on. But I realized I was just five kilometers away, so I came and did it here, got early, give my legs a little bit of a break, and uh, I talked to a lot of people, a lot of people. Every trip, I love it, I love it. I must have talked to about 20 people. Just, you know, people stop and say, hey, what's going on, you know? A few of them will be following me on my, uh, YouTube page, which is pretty cool. I think mainly because they just want to see how this guy, if, if this is even going to work out. I guess they're curious to see how this is going to end. So, I don't know, if I saw a guy riding his bike across the country, or across the province, I'd tune in. I want to see how this guy did. I want to see what he accomplished and uh, where he ended up. So it feels kind of neat being out there again. Yeah, I know. I miss it like crazy. But 17 days to pull this off. I'm pretty sure I could do it in 15, maybe 14. The one thing about not having booked campsites is there's no pressure to get anywhere other than at about 6 o'clock. Then you're starting to think about accommodations. Where am I spending the night? 
I'm not entirely sure I like this this scavenger camping or this uh, what do they call it stealth camping stealth just means to me that 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 you're trying to sleep somewhere you're not supposed to but no crown land for around for a while yet so uh, if I have to hit the provincial parks I'll hit the provincial parks uh, there's some family campgrounds but uh, do the best I can I, I think I think I was a little out of my mind because I've never done this before and I just packed up and took off so can't wait to see how this ends I had one problem the G2G trail had a massive uh, had a massive um, detour bridge washed out it was only about maybe eight to ten kilometers or so but it took me about two hours it took everything out of me hill after hill long hills like I mean it, it didn't really take everything out of me but honestly it just uh, it just took a lot of time out of my day so I wasn't sure where to go from here uh, but I'm here so tomorrow not sure when I'm getting up I might just go to bed when it gets dark this way maybe four or five o'clock in the morning I'll get up pack up and get on the road and just take my time now, like I said if it's a hundred kilometer ride it's a 12 hour day and I've got a Monday morning rush hour busy traffic on the highway that I need to use for at least 50 kilometers It is what it is. Alright, I'm gonna go get ready for tomorrow. Should be a good day. I'm not sure what the weather's supposed to be like. The wind's been off and off, so. I feel this real calmness, this real being relaxed, just away from it all and everyone and it's kind of a shock to the system. I've gone through that before, 12 days away from home and, and you get sick because uh, the shock of no stress. Well worth it though. Okay, uh, I think that's about it right now. I'm just rambling, so uh, yeah, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Day four. Cool.